Okay, big day here, folks. Big day. You know what day it is? Ah! What? It's heavy. That's not a day. That's not a day. It's the first day we get to use our Dutch oven. Snicker, snicker, grunt, snort. I don't get it. It's a Dutch oven. Learn language. Learn language. You find out. My it's... favorite actor is David Duchovny. David Duchovny? Yeah. I liked how he played Mulder. For those of you who are not members of our a member of our family, although I don't know why anybody would be watching this if you're not a member of our family, unless I happen to upload it to YouTube. Anyway, we call David Duchovny Dutch Oven. Dutch Oven. I feel like that was popular knowledge, though. Is it popular knowledge really? Yeah, because his last name looks like Dutch Oven. -y, so. You would think so. <laughs> <laughs> so it should, maybe we're not the only ones. I guess I should assume. So there we go. We're gonna use our Dutch Oven. And really, if you don't know what that means, look it up. Don't look it up, kids. <laughs> Google it. I'm a don't bad Google it, kids. <laughs> I'm a bad influence. Look, so here we go. This is ah, it's upside down. So this is uh, we're doing oxtails again. This is from Tip Top Meats, which is you no, know, we like that place. And then then I just had the idea. In addition to having oxtail, even though the oxtail is really good, but it doesn't have like a lot of meat on the bone. And so I thought we're going to do a bigger stew this time. Also a bigger stew because we have this guy instead of, well, sh let me do a, a little comparison. Last time we used this guy, this ratty old guy, right? So I don't know if you can really tell how much bigger it is, but it's bigger. This is like two quarts. That's five quarts. That's bigger. Yeah, but also we're going to need to prepare the ve the vegetables for this shit. Yeah, so we are. So let me, I cut them up? I guess we're doing, uh, we could, I could show you. I could show you and show the wonderful people that are watching this. We want to do all three potatoes? Uh, I, th I think, uh, I think two should work. Okay. Then let's... Uh, we might, the, like, I think two to start out with. We might do, like, three if we need them. Okay. I'll put, I'll do the, the one we've had for a while, which is a little smaller, but we also got, these are big, big potatoes. Okay. I'm, now I'm going to cut, uh, I'm going to cut this uh, video for now and we'll start preparing the potatoes. This potato is a fucking freak. It has growths. Yes, it does. But that's okay. It's safe. If you didn't know that. <laughs> It's not. It's are not. those like flower? I don't know what. That's because 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 it's like is it you know it's wanting to grow more potatoes. Oh yeah. <laughs> so it's it's not bad. Okay. It's not spoiled. All right, so we got the oxtail in the Duchovny. Yeah. And now Jordan's going to be putting the other meat in there. Yeah, uh, this is some sort of. And what part of this was was this? Um. Ooh, you know what? I don't think it's specifically said because I was looking to see good meats for stew, like in like I know like chuck and some other cuts, but it just said all it said was beef for stew. So I mean, yeah. I don't think it even really specified what kind it is. So maybe it's a chuck. But the thing that the what we found out in the investigation on like what kind of meat is good for stew, it's it's kind of meat. It's normally like tougher meat, and you see it's really lean. It's like lean and a little tougher. So if you if we were to fry this or or just like cook it in a um, Cook it in a pan, it would be tough, but that's good for stewing. Yeah, because it got to break down. And that's something, right, it got to break down. It's got something in there. I can't remember. Is collagen things a bell? I don't know. Google it. <laughs> <laughs> collagen. I'm pretty sure it's not collagen. I'm pretty sure it's like cartilage. No, not cartilage. It was some, whatever it was, there's something in, in this meat, in this kind of meat too, that, that it just gives it more, a lot more flavor when it's cooking for a long time. So this is made for slow cooking, yeah. which is what we're going to do. We're going to be technically, well, we'll be braising the meat. Yeah. Which means you just like halfway. It's kind of like a combination between uh, cooking. Um, well, it is cooking. It's not quite boiling because you're putting like like halfway up. You're putting the water like halfway up. That's braising. Yeah. So yeah, we, we haven't done this before, but I thought this is good since we got the bigger combination thing. Since like I said, the oxtail is really tasty, but it doesn't have a uh, a lot of meat on the bone for two of us to share. That way, so I thought, let's get a bunch more meat. Yeah. And also the other thing, because like I said, because we got this, did I mention? It's five quarts, it's big. I guess it's not absolutely necessary that I show this, but just to make the point that we're slow cooking, where it's a low temperature, we're gonna go at 275 for two and a half hours. Mm, I just realized after looking at the playback of this, I need to wash this. I need to, yeah, I need to, I need to clean my, I need to clean my stove.
All right, so now this is clean, or at least cleaner. God, you know, in close-up, it still looks dirty. I swear I cleaned it. I just, I just couldn't leave without at least showing that I tried to make my kitchen a little cleaner. <laughs> Jordan is the sauce master, so tell us about this, Jordan. Well, this is uh, Stubbs barbecue sauce, and uh, I heard a lot of good things about it, and like along with uh, Sweet Baby Ray's, which I tried earlier. But uh, we got this fucker from Ralph's, and we're <laughs> gonna put this fucker in the in here with the meat. Yeah, so we were gonna start cutting up the vegetables, and then thought, but then uh, Jordan thought maybe put the sauce in the meat first. Yeah, we want this sauce directly on the meat. We want it to, like, mar marinate in it. Yeah, so that's what we'll be using. We'll be doing some other spices as well, but the main thing is is stubs. Yeah. So I just thought I'd get a shot of here's what it looks like with some sauce. There's the sauce. Now it's time for the vegetables. Oh, yeah, so tell us what you're going to do with the potatoes, Jordan. Yeah, well, okay, so we have two potatoes. Uh, we have, like, this big old fucker, and then we also have, like, this smaller fucker. And what I've decided is I'm going to cut this smaller one into smaller chunks, and the bigger one is going to be in more big chunks. And that's because... Uh, like, if we have smaller chunks, then that can get into the smaller cracks of that whole thing. Because there are still a little bit of, uh, cracks for it to seep into, so that's- and it's also variety. Variety. Cool. So here's Jordan with his potato cutting skills. Eh. And while Jordan's cutting the potatoes, I just want to make a point here. This, uh, Dutch oven that we got it's cool, see, because last time when we used that other pan that I showed you, we had to use aluminum foil, and that turned out to be kind of a pain to, to, because you want to tightly seal it, according to the rest, slow cooking recipes. So then when you tightly seal the aluminum foil, then you got to, when it's hot and it's in the oven and you take it out and you got to take the foil off and put it back on, and it's just kind of a pain to do that when, you're, when your hands are inside of one of these. Dexterity is kind of a problem. So anyway, with this thing though, it's really cool. I mean, it's... Okay, it's not like the new invention, but you just put the top on and then take the top off instead of having to mess with aluminum foil. And the other thing, cool, just for future recipes, this also doubles as a skillet. So we can do some stovetop cooking. Haven't done that yet. This is our maiden voyage with David Duchovny. All right, Jordan's cut the potatoes into little pieces. Go ahead, now we do the next step. Yeah, okay, so you're going to want to take them, you're going to want to sprinkle them in all delicate and lovingly. <laughs> Like you gotta take it into your hand and just like let them get into all the cracks. You gotta, cause they're very small, very delicate, very teeny tiny, very t tiny, small, dead, s the other words that mean small, they're minuscule. They're, li they're little, <laughs> little, little potatoes. They're little baby potatoes. They're a lot more delicate than I would have been. I was just gonna dump them in there. <laughs> no, you can't just nope. dump them in there. Okay. We can do that with like the bigger fuck off potatoes, but no, you gotta, you gotta sprinkle these little ones. Fuck in. off potatoes. That's the official name for the bigger potatoes. Yes. Okay. Do you think I need to film all of this? Yes, it is imperative <laughs> that you get every last detail, every last potato that falls into the David Duchovny. Every potato is sacred. Yes. Sign my petition on change.org to have the government legally recognize all potatoes as, as legitimate. <laughs> and then for your viewing pleasure, go... Um... Go uh, go to YouTube and search every sperm is sacred. Don't. Yes. <laughs> kids, no. do it right now, kids. That's not my political stance. If there's any kids, if there's any kids watching this, every sperm is sacred. Every sperm is not sacred. Monty Python. You're meant to nut everywhere. They're being ironic. <laughs> At least I assume they were. You you're meant to nut everywhere. God, <laughs> that's what God said in the Bible. He said, "Go forth and multiply." He meant fuck everything. <laughs> Literally, he was all like, "Get your bone on all the time." How about the sheep and the sloths? <laughs> sheep and the sloths. <laughs> it's, it, it, and the lambs. God's teaching is fuck at every moment of the day. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? 
why not? That's every, half a potato and the bigger pieces. Yeah, motherfucker. You know what to do with these. Uh, yeah, drop it like an unwanted child. Like, I knew what <laughs> happened to me. <laughs> you throw that fucker on the ground, hope it doesn't fucking live to the, to the point where you have to take care of it. <laughs> <laughs> this, this cooking video's taken a dark turn. <laughs> it's an autobiographical <laughs> illustration metaphor of my life. You throw that fucker in. <laughs> Throw out the baby with the bathwater. Fuck it. You never wanted a child. Okay, we've got the cam rolling. No, what kind of political statement are we going to get with these potatoes? The political statement that I'm going to make is that potatoes are good. They're good for the soul. They're good for your body. They're good for the spirit. They remind you of your humble roots. They tell us all that we all belong to the earth and that the earth will consume us all. <laughs> it is very hungry. It wants to eat our bodies whole. And I frankly have no problem with that. <laughs> Kids, look up what Vor is. There is nothing more wholesome than vor. Be sure that yeah. it's soft vor, kids. Can I help with one of these? No. Ah! Okay. You're not allowed to. Not while I'm speaking the gospel of vor. <laughs> now, first off, the thing is, kids, is that go soft vor all the way. You can do it to put a wooden It's just like, no! I don't that. <laughs> you bastard! <laughs> Fine. You know what? Easy. Yeah. I was trying to be all nice and mellowed out and stuff like oh, okay. that. Okay, you're right. I'm sorry. I was trying. I shouldn't. I shouldn't dictate that. Yeah, because you're a fucking piece of shit. You're being all philosophical and calm and zen here, and me, who claims to be Mr. Zen, is going. Just put the potatoes in already. Yeah, you fucking dick bag. So tell us about the Earth consuming us again. Yeah, the Earth's gonna eat us all, and it's gonna be like really good. It's gonna be because like we came out of the Earth, and then the Earth's like yum yum. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, mm mm. Oh, wait. What's this? Is this a fucking, like, idiot asshole who, like, just makes a bunch of potatoes? That's my favorite. That's my favorite type of person. Can't wait till you die. So, here we go. We decided to only put onions in now after this. We were going to put some other stuff, like mushrooms and garlic and tomatoes, but now we got, we're just going onions. So, what do you got to say about the onions, Jordan? We got sprinkle of. You gotta sprinkle it, but you gotta do it high and wide. You gotta do it. And watch out, some of these are starting to roll off. Oh, uh, yeah, some, some of them the roll day. off. You get to like hold this over the. Yeah, thing. yeah. And some of them roll off. Again, I'm trying to find don't. this balance to where I'm not like micromanaging, but also. It's okay, it doesn't matter what you do because you'll <laughs> always find something to be critical about. <laughs> Oh, no, don't do that. No. I don't want to do that. It's just that sometimes I go, there's a fine line between. Like, no, it really is like okay. Teaching, because like teaching and being an no. asshole. No, what? you're not being an asshole if it's to me because I'm just a dumbass. <laughs> no, you're not. I am. No. I am just a huge dumbass. No. But anyway, so you got you to gotta get them into the crevices. I have an obsession with getting things into crevices. <laughs> it's because I feel empty inside and I need to feel fill all the holes that I can. Well, cooking is therapeutic. Folks. No, it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to worry about quantity here. It's got five quarts in there. We get a cup. The only reason I'm using a measuring cup is just to kind of get a rough idea of what we're putting in there. We're putting about a cup in there, but don't use you know whatever, whatever you want. To... Here's the main point: we really can't tell where the meat ends. We don't want to totally boil the meat. Hey but... kids, anyone remember the Where's the Beef campaign? <laughs> This is a reenactment of it. Those old ladies are probably dead now. Whoa! Oh! Oh! I'm pouring down all the. I seasoned the potatoes, but it's all going down into the water. But that's okay, I could just re fucking season them. Whoa! This is a lesson in hubris. Mankind's downfall. We. <laughs> This is the Tower of Babel. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I'm out of water. Okay, politics and religion aside, I'm looking and going, you know, I was I was getting ready to say that we can't really tell where the water is going to go, but yeah, I can tell it's like, it's pretty high. So that, that's, you know, that's definitely enough. Maybe more than enough. 
Because when you're braising, you're not supposed to totally cover the meat. And yeah. th we might have totally covered the meat, but that's okay because it's also it's also covered with vegetables and the it's, <laughs> it's going to be in there for two and a half hours. What, Jordan? This isn't sex. You don't get the meat wet. <laughs> Hey kids, anyone watch the movie Ratatouille? It will watch Ratatouille. Because in that movie they cook. I thought it was going to be heavier than that. Wait, hold on a second. Also, here's very essential, folks. What you want to have for your seasoning is is Fred Flintstone and his buddy and his buddy Barney Rubble. They're good buddies. Look at that. Mm, 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 mm. Did you know Mel Brooks voiced Barney Rubble? I only knew that recently. So the answer is yes. Yeah. But I didn't for all those well, years. Not Mel, I, Mel no, Blank. Mel Blank. Mel yeah, Blank. Fuck, I'm an idiot. Mel Blank. <laughs> no, you're not an idiot! I am! Okay, so now we got the top on our David Duchovny and it's ready to go. So we might as well make it ready to go. Here you go. Hey, hold us, Jordan. We'll record the money. Could you just like hold it right there? Okay. I guess just point. It's still running. Yeah. Yeah. The monumental whoa, moment. Whoa. Or our Dutch oven. Yeah. Our Dutch oven. Fucker. Our Dutch oven goes into. The oven. Yeah. Is there an earthquake? Like and subscribe. <laughs> like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. That's gonna be my theme video forever now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's recording. Look at this motherfucker. I know, we can't wait any longer. We were gonna let it go another half hour. We did it two hours, we said two and a half, fuck it. Because, you know, slow cooking, it could be two hours, three hours, it could be 12 hours, I don't know. So, it smells so good. Wait, can you see the steam? I don't know if you can see the steam rising. Yeah, we just opened it. Just opened our decovany. So now, pardon us while, you know what, maybe we'll show a little bit in our bowl, and then uh, that'll be the end of this. Yeah. Right? I just want to fucking eat it. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> Shut up. All right, so here's... Here's a little shot. Yeah, so what do you guys say, Jordan? Uh, this thing is really fucking hot right now. He put the temperature in and it was like over 200. Uh, and that's in Fahrenheit, not in like every other part of the world <laughs> temperature measurement. But the thing is, is that like if it weren't for the fact that it would like probably burn my face off like in Indiana Jones, then I would just like I would just dive into this. <laughs> Ooh, I just realized I'm going to get you a piece of... Yeah, so that's the oxtail buried in there under the potatoes. I'm going to also get uh, you a piece of the other meat. Do you want a little piece of the other meat, too? Uh, yeah. Okay. Little finishing touch here. Oh, yeah, little finishing touch here. Jordan put some uh, onions on top. Little onion, uh, the little green part of the green onion. Uh, instead, we did Instead of cooking it inside, Jordan decided to use that as a garnish instead. Yeah. Just gonna put a button on this, that's all. Just wanted to let you know we're done. We're done, we made it. We made this uh, stew, stew uh, oxtail plus whatever mystery meat. Good, all it said on the package was beef for stew. So okay, I'd done a little research to find out what kind of beefs were good for stew and they said like chuck and other stuff. Like, hey, if you don't know, Google it. And I don't think Jordan will warn you against that, because I don't think Googling meat for stew is dangerous. You never know, though, what people are into. So this is our uh, first use of our Dutch oven. Let's see how it goes. Without, See if we can eat without burning our tongues. Later that evening, I just thought I wouldn't leave you hanging. Yes, we were able to eat without burning our tongues and we got leftovers that was the whole thing that's the whole goal of getting that well one of the goals about getting that big old five quart dutch oven and i followed the care and feeding instructions of the uh dutch oven and uh put some oil on it and cleaned it cleaned it without soap it's kind of weird to clean things without soap clean dishes without soap but that's what i did and now it's resting comfortably that's the skillet and you can't see it in the dark but the Dutch ovens in the back. Boy, I've spent way too much time on this, haven't I? Well, that's it. Good night, David Dutch Oveny.